Hi everyone. Okay, so welcome to our career talk on women inspiring other women, the women of the Namria Commission Service. So this is actually one of the agency's last activities for this year's Women's Month celebration. So ako po si Anu Ramos mula sa Geospatial Information Systems Management Branch and I will be your host and facilitator for this morning's activity. Okay, so a few reminders lamang po, especially for those of us who are joining via Zoom. Please ensure that your microphones are muted to avoid any audio feedback. And also, we will be allocating ample time for your questions and answers. Okay, so aside from raising those direct questions, you can also type in your questions using the chat boxes from both the Zoom and also the YouTube platform. So muli, magandang umaga po sa lahat. Okay, so sana po malinaw po sa lahat yung mga rules po natin. And then, um, of course, it is but proper for us to start this morning's activity with a prayer. Maraming salamat po. Okay, so at this point, allow me to call in the advisor of the Namria Gender and Development Focal Point System, uh, our Deputy Administrator Efren P. Karandang. So magandang umaga po, sir, uh, for our open remarks. Over to you, sir Efren. Uh, maraming salamat, Anro. Magandang umaga sa ating mga magigiting na kababaihan ng uh, Namria. Kasama na rin yung mga kalalakihan. Uh, it's a great honor for me to open this program uh, giving tribute to the great women of the Commission Service of Namria. Medyo, medyo na-excite ako every time I hear about uh, activities pertaining to the women of the Commission Service of Namria kasi way back in 2004, it was my office that uh, initiated the um, uh, strategic policy shift ng Namria that is to admit women into the commission service because for the longest time we are being asked by by people why we are not accepting women into the commission service when in fact even the pma or the pnp have already been uh uh accepting women uh as usual yung 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 rason na binibigay ng ating leadership noon is because our Charter, Republic Act 2057, only provides for male Filipino citizens. Uh, but then at the back of my mind, I was thinking, why not? So nag uh, confer tayo with our counterparts in the AFP at uh, malungkot masabihin, pero nung uh, early 2000 lang natin nalaman ano yung basis ng AFP, uh, Women uh, Commission the Service. At ito nga yung RA7192, which is the Women in Development and Nation Building Act. So immediately, uh, we did the paperwork. The first hurdle was to uh, get an approval from our Board of Governors kasi this is a strategic policy shift. So the first question asked by the board to us is, uh, how are you sure that the Commission Service of Namria are covered by that law, RA7192? Kasi nakalagay doon is specific admission of women into military schools run by the AFP and the PNP. 
there was no mention of other commission service. But then uh, we said, uh, please look into section two, paragraph three, which says that all government departments and agencies shall review and revise all their regulations, circulars, issuances, and procedures to remove gender bias therein. So in accept you ng board, we were very happy. The next step was to submit a draft uh, department administrative order to the ENR, which fortunately at that time was headed by uh, Secretary uh, Elisaya Bebet Goson, who is a very, very strong advocate for gender and development. So, wala pa yatang one week, lumabas. Yung uh, Department Administrative Order Number 31, Series of 2004. And by November, meron na tayong kadete. The very first in the uh, uh, line officer na babae in the person of Ms. Reina Karandang. No relation to me. Uh, May kasabay pa yata siya, si Ms. Marby Gale Dayan. Uh, unfortunately, parehong wala na sila ngayon sa servisyo, but still, they they made their mark when they were still in the service. And uh, that was 2004, and right now we have 23 out of 67 officers. Women, hardworking, dependable, trustworthy, patient, prudent, Judicious. I'm not saying the the men are not uh, does not do not have those qualities, but I I I am very very proud to say that our women in the commission service are strong leaders and really an equal partner of our men in in the commission service. So uh, that. Na tutuwa talaga ako na meron yung culminating activity natin sa ating Women's Month ay hina-highlight ang, uh, ang achievement na ito ng ating mga kababaihan. Uh, binabati ko ang ating mga uh, distinguished speakers. Meron tayong line-up ng mga speakers from uh, HB and also meron din tayong uh, panauhing uh, bisita from uh, the PCG Auxiliary. By the way, Yung first women, woman pilot ng Palu was a woman, uh, Eileen. Karandang din apelido, unfortunately. Fortunately, karandang din. And then, uh, sa Coast Guard, nabagit ko yung Coast Guard, pero din tayong uh, 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 ano, babaeng official doon, Irene Karandang, siguro namimit nung iba nating mga kasama. Karandang din siya, but no really, wala silang relasyon sa akin. So, binabati ko again, binabati ko ng isang mapagpalayang uh, umaga ang mga magigiting na kababaihan ng Namria kasama na ang mga magigiting na kababaihan ng ating hydrography branch. Uh, mabuhay kayong lahat. Salamat po. Okay, maraming salamat po DAF friends. So si DAF friend binigyan na tayo ng pa konting walk through ano kung paano nga ba yung entry uh, ng mga women sa ating commission service dito sa hydrography branch ng Namria. Ano nga pa ang mandato ng Namria? Kasi I believe we have audiences here who are outside Namria. At ano nga ba yung specific responsibilities ng isa sa mga branches namin which is yung hydrography branch? Particularly yung kanilang a core of commission service. So to provide a context uh, for today's discussion, we will be showing an audio-visual presentation to AVTs actually, first on the Namria profile, and the second would be uh, the women in the commission service of the hydrography branch. Maps are essential tools to help people locate objects, features, and events, and navigate their way on the surface of the Earth. Maps enable us to discover, know, and analyze our environment. Maps provide information to be used for planning, decision-making, operations, and governance. More than 80% of the information needed in everyday life deal with location or geography of people, places, things and events.
The National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, or NAMRIA, plays an important role in generating and managing maps and geospatial information. It is an agency of the Philippine government attached to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DENR. As the country's central mapping and geospatial information management agency, NAMRIA serves the needs of the line services of DENR, other government offices, and the general public. NAMRIA's mission is to provide quality topographic maps, nautical charts, and other geospatial products and services in a timely and coordinated manner. NAMRIA envisions itself to be a center of excellence, building a geospatially empowered Philippines where government, businesses, and individuals make full use of geospatial information in making important decisions and conducting their daily activities. NAMRIA has six core functions. Geodetic Reference System Development Pursuant to Executive Order No. 192, NAMRIA is mandated to establish and maintain the primary geodetic control network for all surveying and mapping in the country. It is in line with this mandate that the agency is undertaking the modernization of the Philippine Geodetic Reference System or PGRS as part of its vision of building a geospatially empowered Philippines. The modernization program is aligned with Resolution 266 adopted by the United Nations General Assembly during its 69th session, dated 26 February 2015, that recommends the adoption and active participation of member states. In the definition of a Global Geodetic Reference Frame, or GGRF, for sustainable development. The program will upgrade the existing Philippine Reference System of 1992 from a static and local system to a datum aligned with a GGRF that is in sync with real-world ground affirmations and is managed and utilized by competent PGRS stakeholders. Topographic Mapping NAMRIA produces topographic and derivative maps on various scales, in paper or digital forms. These are used as basic tools and references by the government for infrastructure and development planning, disaster risk reduction and management, environmental protection, and research and development. They are also used by the private sector in investment planning and exploration, by the academic and science communities in research activities, and by the general public. Topographic maps are regularly updated using satellite images and aerial photographs and from the conduct of field validation surveys. Small and medium-scale topographic maps of 1 to 250,000 and a 1 to 50,000 scale respectively generally cover large areas for macro planning. Large-scale topographic maps of 1 to 10,000 and 1 to 4,000 scale or larger cover smaller areas but are more accurate and show more detail. NAMRIA, likewise, produces updated administrative maps in the form of provincial and regional maps. Hydrography, Physical Oceanography, and Nautical Charting NAMRIA conducts hydrographic and physical oceanographic surveys and produces nautical charts like berthing, harbor, approach, coastal, general sailing, and overview charts covering the country's maritime jurisdictions. The agency also publishes predicted tide and current tables, coast pilot books, lists of lights, notices to mariners, and other nautical publications. Nautical charts and publications ensure safety in maritime navigation and provide basic information for the management of the maritime space and resources, as well as base data for climate change studies. Charts and hydrographic data are important in complying with the provisions of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea relative to the country's maritime entitlements. Likewise, 
the nautical publications are required under the Safety of Life at Sea Convention under the International Maritime Organization. Environment and Natural Resource Mapping NAMRIA conducts nationwide environment and natural resource assessment and mapping of various thematic geospatial information such as land cover, coastal resources, inundation of coastal low-lying areas at various sea level rise scenarios, tenorial instruments, and upland or forest land population, among others. These fundamental data sets serve as vital inputs to policy formulation, physical and developmental planning, provision of social services, disaster risk reduction and management, and climate change mitigation and adaptation studies on various levels. In addition, the agency continues to provide information on classification of lands of the public domain as well as technical assistance to DENR and the final mapping and preparation of draft house bills fixing the final forest limits of the country, including validation of the general location of areas under the National Integrated Protected Area System, among other mapping requirements. Maritime Zones and Boundaries Mapping NAMRIA is responsible for the survey and mapping of the country's terrestrial and maritime territories. It delineates the different maritime zones of the archipelago including the exclusive economic zone and continental shelves. It spearheaded the successful defense in 2012 of the country's submission to the United Nations for an extended continental shelf in the Benham Rice region, now called Philippine Rice. It also provides technical support to various government agencies on matters pertaining to maritime boundary delimitation and law of the sea issues as well as to the local government units and the delineation and delimitation of the 15-kilometer municipal water boundaries. Geospatial Information Management and Services NAMRIA's Geospatial Information and Management Services include Information System Strategic Planning, Geospatial Databasing, Information and Web System Development, Information and Communications Technology, Resource and Network Management Geographic Information Systems or GIS Project Collaboration and Technical Assistance GIS Trainings Packaging of Geospatial Information Products and Services Stakeholder Relations and Partnership Development Information, Education, and Communication and Client Services NAMRIA also plays active roles and even acts as lead in local and international programs in the area of geospatial information management and services relevant to disaster risk reduction and management and climate change adaptation. NAMRIA spearheads the implementation of the National Spatial Data Infrastructure, or NSDI, which is designed to provide a mechanism for sharing of and access to geospatial information produced and maintained by the various stakeholders and custodians across the country. A major output of the NSDI is GeoPortal Philippines. This application system, managed by NAMRIA, serves as a platform for online and open sharing of geospatial information. NAMRIA also assists other government agencies and the general public in disaster mapping. NAMRIA is one of the member agencies of the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRRMC. The agency collaborates with other government agencies in the production of multi-hazard maps and information, education, and communication campaigns in various local government units. NAMRIA also assists Congress in the crafting of priority bills on maritime zones, archipelagic sea lanes, land classification, comprehensive land use, and protected areas, among others. From its humble beginnings in 1987, NAMRIA has come a long way and stands firm in accomplishing its mandated tasks and responsibilities to its clients and stakeholders and to the goals of DENR. This is the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority 
an agency helping to build a geospatially empowered Philippines. Welcome to Namria. Around 80% of international trade in the world is carried out by sea. So for a nation, especially a maritime nation like the Philippines, there is a need to address safe and efficient operation of maritime traffic control. Therefore, it is necessary to create a hydrographic service. The hydrographic service, through systematic data collection carried out on the coast and the sea, disseminates information including nautical charts, coast pilots, notices to mariners, among others, in support of maritime navigation safety and marine environment preservation, defense, and exploitation. In the Philippines, hydrography officially started in 1901 with the creation of the Manila Field Station, which later became the Bureau of Coast and Geodetic Survey or BCGS. All officials then were American citizens. 1938, unang tinanggap ang mga Filipino male cadets para maging hydrographic survey officers. The year after, BCGS was included under the Department of National Defense. The Philippine government then took over its operation, supervision, and control after World War II. In 1987, BCGS was merged with other agencies to create the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, or NAMRIA, an attached agency of DANR. Finally, after the rationalization program in 2013, the Coast and Geodetic Department of Namria was renamed as the Hydrography Branch as it is currently known today. It maintained its uniform service, being composed of officers and enlisted personnel with ranks similar to the AFP. Noong 1901, puro lalaki lang ang tinatanggap bilang opisyal. RA 2057 states, Officers of the Corps shall be natural-born male citizens of the Philippines. Gumawa ang DNR ng AO No. 31, allowing women to join in the competitive process of selection and admission into the agency and equal opportunities for training, work assignments, and promotion. At sa wakas, inappoint ng HP on November 16, 2004, sina Ms. Reyna Carandang and Ms. Marvie Gail Dayan, becoming part of the Corps of Commission Officers of the Coast and Geodetic Survey Department. After four years pa nun, July 2008, nang may unang nakasampa sa ating mga barko, sina Lt. Bay Diana Sinsuat and Lt. Commander Lorena Jasmine Lerio. Sa ngayon, 34 na ang naging commissioned female officers, kung saan 23 doon ay active pa. 34% na yon ang total HB commissioned officers, and there are at least two female officers aboard the vessels. May pagmamalaki talaga natin ng progresong to. Bilang babae, tayo rin ay karapat dapat, mabisa at pantay sa mga kapatid natin sa bansang ito. Hindi hadlang ang kasarian kung ano man ang iba to sa atin. The Namria Commission Service has equal opportunities for whatever gender. We are women. We are empowered. We make change happen. Okay, so I hope that with those two AVPs na nakita po natin, you get to know Namria and its people more. So today's talk po for this morning will feature not one, not two, but actually four resource persons from the hydrography branch. Medyo jam-packed po tayo ngayon. Sila po yung mga magigiting at nagagandahang mga kababaihan mula sa Corps of Commission Service ng Namria. So allow us first to introduce them one by one. Our first resource person is probationary ensign Joanna Marie S. Quilon. She is currently a hydrographic survey officer at the Hydrographic and Geomagnetic Data Management Section of the Survey Support Division at HP. Probationary ensign Quilon has participated in a number of hydrographic surveys and has also served as a third officer of the Hall Board Committee of the BRP Hezon Dry Docking 2020. She is a licensed electronics engineer and holds a bachelor's degree in electronics engineering from St. Louis University in Baguio City. She hails from Asinloc in Sambales province. Our first resource person 
Probationary Ensign Joanna Marie S. Kilon. Next on our list is Ensign Clarissa May B. Biong. She is currently an Electronic Navigational Chart Compiler at the Nautical Charting Division of HP. Ensign Biong has participated in a number of hydrographic surveys for Patipot in Zambales Province, Batangas City Harbor, Bawan, also in Batangas Province, and the Sulu Sea. At present, she is working on ENCs such as Port of Suwal and Update of Iloilo Harbor and Approach ENCs. She is a licensed geodetic engineer and holds a bachelor's degree in geodetic engineering magna cum laude from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. She hails from Tanay Rizal, is happily married, and has a 21-month-old toddler. Our second resource person ends in Clarissa May B. Biong. We also have Lieutenant Junior Grade Geraldine Oronquillo. She is currently the Chief Survey Officer and also the ISO Officer, Document Controller, and Technical Inspector of the BRP Hizon. She was involved in various hydrographic surveys of Namria, including the Manila North Harbor, Port of Suwal and vicinity, Luca Wharf in Alaminos, Pangasinan and vicinity, domestic sea lane from Cebu to Surigao provinces, Manila Bay and Cabalio Bay. She holds a professional license in electronics engineering and is a graduate of the Batangas State University with a bachelor's degree in electronics and communications engineering. She was born and raised in Batangas City, Batangas Province. Our third resource person, Lieutenant Junior Grade Geraldine O. Ronquillo. Completing the pool of our competent resource persons is Lieutenant Commander Hasmin D. Lerio. She is currently a staff officer at the Office of Division Chief of the Survey Support Division of HB and is a Category B Hydrographic Surveyor. Lieutenant Commander Lerio is the first lady officer to rank as Lieutenant Commander and is currently the most senior lady officer at HB. She also holds membership in a number of international and local technical working groups, notably the undersea features naming, the delineation of the outer limits of extended continental shelf, and other administration and HR-related committees, including the Gender and Development Focal Point System. She holds a master's degree in development management with honors from the Development Academy of the Philippines. She is a licensed electronics and communications engineer by profession. Born and raised in Surigao del Sur, she is not a fan of crowds but prefers long walks and binge watching YouTube videos. Our last resource person, Lieutenant Commander Hasmin D. Lerio. Our first resource person is Probationary Ensign Joanna Marie. Okay, so um, nakita nyo naman po, no, talagang high caliber po yung mga resource persons po natin for this career ko. So without further ado, let us start our discussions for this morning. So naisip po namin, maybe we can divide the discussions into three topics, okay? So we will first talk about the entry of women in Namria Corps of Commission Service. Paano nga ba nakapasok ulit ang mga kababaihan sa Corps of Commission Service ng Namria? This was partly discussed already by DAF friend and we hope to hear more from our resource persons. So as mentioned again from our AVPs, Namria has its own Corps of Commission Service officers from our hydrography branch. Sila po yung mga uniform personnel po ng aming ahensya and fortunately and a considerable number of them are actually strong and passionate group of women. So narinig ko nga kay D.A. Efren kanina 23 ngayon yung mga officers sa hydrography branch. So we hope that number will be increasing in the next coming years. Diba? So sige, mag-start na ako ng first question ko. 
Uh, mula po nung nagbukas yung namriya ng kanyang pintuan para sa kababaihan noong 2004, kamusta po ba yung mga unang araw ninyo bilang commissioned officers? So unahin ko na po siguro muna si Lieutenant Commander Hasmin na ngayon ay umahawak ng record bilang kauna-unahang babaeng may rank na Lieutenant Commander. So Ma'am Hasmin, kamusta po ba yung mga first days ninyo as commissioned officer? Hi, good morning to everyone. Ayan. Hi, Andrew. Good, uh, good morning to all the viewers. Anyways, first, I think it was July 2008. And I remembered, uh, mayroon akong idea on what exactly is Namriya, ano yung hydrography, but I did not really, parang, ano siya, parang sobrang bilis. So, Fast-paced yung nangyari. Yung, para, uh, I was assigned first. Yung MGB at that time, yung GGD, nasa HB pa noon. And I was assigned there. So, more on GIS processing. Then, after two weeks, immediately, barko na ako. And, uh, and then, four months after, bago pa ako binaba uli. So, family-wise, even yung family ko, they were not able to expect na, ay, ganun pala yung work that I have to go aboard the vessel. So, medyo sa akin, um, yung risk niya, risk-wise, uh, hindi alam ng family ko. And even me, uh, hindi ko siya inanticipate na ganung level pala. But it was all fun. Parang I found it unique, very unique in fact. So kahit difficult for me, I have motion sickness actually. So even though it was difficult, I, fi- I found it very unique and interesting. That's why I lasted. Ah, okay. So, yun nga. Yun naman yung importante talaga, ma'am, eh, yung may fun element talaga dun sa trabaho. What about po the other? Siguro tanongin ko din si Ma'am Geraldine. Ma'am Geraldine, at kamusta po ba yung unang experience nyo or unang araw ninyo as a commissioned officer uh, sa HB? Hello po sa lahat. So, <laughs> yung mga first days, actually, uh, for a whole year kasi, nasa office ako. And then parang that part, that time, nire-ready na nila ako for work and medyo na-absorb ko siya. So nung time na nabarko na ako, nung field work na ako, I was ready. And it's uh, sobrang uh, exciting yung trabaho namin. So uh, hindi, hindi ako natakot eh, mas na-excite ako sa trabaho. Okay, ayun, excitement, fun, yun yung mga naririnig ko so far sa ating mga resource person. What about po si um, uh, si Ensign Biong, si Ma'am Kla? Ano po yung, uh, kamusta yung unang araw niyo bilang isang commissioned officer sa HD? Sa akin naman, yung first days, siguro it was all about getting a feel of what the job is all about. So parang may kiramdam ka, parang isip mo, sa, para sa akin ba to, kaya ko ba to? Yun yung mga tanong. Thankfully naman, nung time ko, we already had our senior female officers, no? I had Ma'am Min, I had Ma'am Bai, and Ma'am Aya. Sila talaga yung mga first mentors ko. And they taught me so much about the job and the responsibilities. Kaya, nung time na yun, kahit lahat bago, absorb mo talaga everything. It was fun and challenging at the same time. So, I was really thankful na nakapasok ako sa service. Ayun, so may mga mentor. Importante din talaga yung may mer- meron tayong mga mentor sa ating mga trabaho. And of course, one of our probationary and scene, si Miss Joanna. Ma'am Joanna, kayo po, kamusta po yung first day nyo as commissioned officer dito sa HD? Uh, good morning po sa lahat. Um, bali, my first day as a commissioned officer was uh, February 29th, or November 29th. 19 sa HDMS po yun until now. Um, the first day was exciting po since I was looking forward to it back then. And to think na you will start a career that would help our country, it is really fulfilling and I feel blessed at the same time po. Yun po. Okay, thank you. So talagang very uh, thankful yung ating apat na resource person for their job. Um, nabigla ko lang naisip sa ngayon kasi uh, we cannot really deny the fact that um, di ba po before male dominated po talaga yung ating mga commissioned officers sa Namriya. So uh, sa inyong pananaw po, paano po ba ito tinanggap na inyong male counterparts yung nag-start na yung entry ng ating mga kababaihan sa commission service? Wala ba tayong naging issue patungkol po dito? So siguro I can ask 
si Ma'am Hasmin po uli. Uh, actually, di ba, kasi yung batch talaga namin yung first female na sumampan ng barko. So, dito sa office, I, I, I think it accepted siya already. Eh. Kasi 2004 pa lang, we have women officers already. And we have uh, NCOs, non-commissioned officers na female. So, no issue. Pagdating naman sa barko, hindi naman nakaramdam na uh, officers to officers wise, it was not a big deal. So, siguro, let's say we have NCOs, they were like, uh, parang tatay na natin, no? they are bulky. So, at first, nakaramdam ako ng intimidation. Eh. Parang, oh, uh, this man, I like my father. Parang, paano kasi na? At barko yun eh. So, highly technical. So, ganun yung experience. Pero, intimidation-wise, ilang wala naman kasi mechanisms were put in place. Tapos, they, may, they made effort na ma-accommodate yung mga female kasi yung mga barko natin not designed naman talaga originally for uh, na mag-board ng mga babae but they were able, yung management lahat ginawa talaga para uh, yung mga babae is matanggap sa environment kahit uh, technical or barko sa office no uh, they made effort also na kausapin yung mga personnel and in fact we had may laging biruan nga minsan eh na if you want a disciplined unit maglagay daw ng babae. So I guess effective yung system na yon na may babae. And probably that's the reason why kung bakit consistently may at least two officers na babae sa barko. Kasi it made an impact at least. Actually, agree ako dyan. Not just with what you're doing at the survey vessels, but with any organization, uh, dapat talaga meron talagang kababaihan. Kasi nga iba yung organizational management skills ng mga kababaihan compared sa aming mga kalalamihan. So, agree ako dyan sa point mo na yan, ma'am. So, um, si Ms. Geraldine naman, uh, ma'am, what about the enlisted personnel? Nakaranas po ba kayo ng siguro personal prejudice from them? Um, uh, with regards kasi sa pagiging babae, actually, mas marespeto sila eh. Mas, uh, mas naging, ang tawag dito, mas nag-ayos sila ng sarili nila kasi pera ng babae. Pero siguro ang magiging prejudice siguro is mas matagal yung experience na nila eh. Mas marami silang alam. So, yun yung, yun yung part na itatry mo na makuha yung respeto nila. Pero pagdating sa pagiging babae, andun na yung respeto nila. Naturally kasi gentleman yung mga Pilipino. So, wala tayong problema sa part na yun. Yeah, agree ako doon. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I I think it matters talaga yung um, culture din ng Pinoy. Malaking bagay din siya talaga. And talking about the culture of Pinoys, yun nga pa bigla ko lang naisip na actually, ang Pilipinas naman talaga ranks high on the countries na very inclusive when it comes to women and opportunities. So I think nag-transcend naman ito sa nararanasan natin ngayon sa core of commission service ng HP. Okay, so um, as we all know by now, um, most of our commissioned officers, women commissioned officers, work with their male counterparts in one of the agency survey vessels. Tanongin po nga lang po muna siguro, ilan po ba yung survey vessels natin ngayon ma'am? Mga ma'am? We have four. We have four. So for the information po of everyone, ano-ano po yung mga survey vessels po na yun? Uh, Ako na lang ba? <laughs> okay. So we have BRP Hydrographer Ventura. And then mm -hmm. yung twin sister niya, BRP Hydrographer Perez Betero. We also have Catamaran Vessels, BRP Hydrographer Hison, and then BRP Hydrographer Palma. So four ah, okay. and all. So four. Four survey vessels. So uh, siguro tatanungin ko ulit dito si Miss Geraldine kasi nga nakita ko sa profile niya. She is a Chief Survey Officer. Tama po ma'am, di ba? Chief Survey Officer po kayo ng BRP Hilon. Yes Okay, po. so an sa mga kababaihan po ma'am, kamusta po yung uh, kababaihan sa loob ng ating mga survey vessels? Before you answer that, talagang curious po ako actually sa work ng HB, especially those who are working aboard survey vessels kasi hindi pa ako nakasampa ng survey vessels natin. <laughs> So, uh, yung nature of work ko kasi is office work lang talaga. So, eh, gusto ko din nga makaranas ng field work paminsan-minsan. So, actually, naiingit ako pag nakakita ako ng mga tiga-HB. 
o mga hydrography branch na talagang uh, they get to experience field work aboard a survey vessels. Pero kamusta po yung experience mo, Ma'am Geraldine, sa mga kababaihan sa loob ng ating survey vessels? I know for a fact na medyo physically demanding, di ba po, yung work natin sa loob ng uh, survey vessels. So, kamusta po ito, Ma'am? Uh, sa akin kasi, normal lang siya. Um, kagaya lang siya ng office work. Um, sa survey vessel lang, 24-7 yung operation namin. Then, pagdating sa field work, uh, hindi kasi kami pinapabayaan ng mga kasamahan natin na lalaki, officer, tsaka NCO. So, yung physical limitations natin, siguro magiging kalaban mo lang alon. Other than that, hindi nga nila kami pinagbubuhat ng mabigat. Ganun sila ka marespeto pagdating sa mga babae. Ah, okay. Nag hindi ko pala natanong before that. No, naisip ko lang po na question for the information of everyone, especially those those who are streaming with us on YouTube, mm -hmm. na parang interesado kung ano nga ba or mag-apply eventually sa HB as a commissioned officer. Ano nga ba po ba yung ginagawa ninyo? Ano yung mga usual daily routines ninyo kapag uh, nag-work kayo sa isang survey vessel? Uh, pwede ko po sigurong tanongin si Uh, si Ma'am Kla, ulit. Hello. So, ako naman, uh, just to inform you, uh, nabar ko ako before for a year before ako mag, uh, ma assign sa office. No? So, during that time, uh, yung routine mo sa bar ko was gigising kayo early morning and then you have your master or your meeting uh, very, very early, mga 7. Uh, so, uh, mag-meeting yon lahat ng crew. And then, you have the CEO who leads the master. And then, after nun, i-discuss nyo yung gagawin nyo for the day. So, if you have your survey, uh, i-discuss ng CEO, survey, anong oras kayo masasimula. And then, after that, uh, uh, each uh, section or Uh, each section ng vessel is pupunta na sa kanya-kanyang trabaho. So, we have the engine, we have tech, we have navigation. So, mag na yan. And then, you start your day, depending sa napag-usapan, sa master. Usually, uh, yung survey, uh, pwede siya tumaga ng 24 hours nga. As sabi ni uh, Ma'am Jerry, no? So, kapag uh, deep sea, ayun, we have 24 hours na survey. And then kapag ka naman mga field survey teams, ayun, we have uh, the morning or the afternoon to do that. So, ayun. Ah, okay. So, uh, magbabalik ako kay Ma'am Hasmin. Ano ba yung unforgettable experience nyo while working uh, aboard inside a survey vessel? Oh, Nako, marami. Marami bang <laughs> ma. <laughs> I think hanggang retirement mo, ganyan lagi yung mga usapan. Anyways, ako kasi motion sickness. So first ride okay. ko talaga. When when sabi ko nga two weeks lang sa office, tapos diretso yung barko. I remembered we traveled 14 hours going to uh, Bicol. So ang taas ng lagnat ko, biyahe pa lang. And then sampa kami ng barko. And then after two days, bitaw na yung barko. Layag na. So ang taas ng lagnat ko, tapos it was I think 20 years. Since my last ano, barko, Roro ride. So everything was very new, fast-paced. Tapos suka lang ako ng suka along the way. <laughs> Hanggang sa umuwi, I was practically useless dun sa first survey. And then, uh, I remember then, I lost, uh, I think, blessed lang ako kasi yung mga batchmates ko, I was able, to, at that time, I had two batchmates with me. Sila tayong commander, um, Danilo Arguelles, who is an executive officer right now at Ventura. And then si Lieutenant Bison Suwat na nag-resign from the service. So they really took care of me. So I lost, I think, five kilos in that 15-day trip. And then uh, sila yung nagpapakain sa akin. But I cannot eat or drink anything. As in, super dehydrated ako after. But parang unti-unti, habang nagbibiyahe ka na nagbibiyahe, nababawasan yung motion sickness mo. So, more exposure. So, isa lang yun, but basically napakarami. Exciting kasi yung service. So, experience, may experience na nagsasurvey ka, tapos may 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 NPA pala, may barila yung NPA at local police. Well, ganong experience. I'm pretty sure yung si, si Jerry, matagal siya nababad na rin sa mga fieldwork. So, kay Joanne, yun yung mga i-anticipate mo habang siguro pag magtatagal ka sa servisyo. Yun, maraming mga 
exciting experiences na uh, maybe hindi may experience ng mga kaklase natin back in college. So, stay ka lang sa service. Yan siguro may papalo ko, John. Ah, so si Miss Joanne po, hindi pa siya nakakasakay ng uh, survey vessel. I mean, hindi pa siya na-assign sa isang survey vessel. Um, since po nung naging commissioned officer po ako, bali ang naging assignment ko lang po sa vessel ay yung uh, kasama po ako sa dry docking po ng Hizon last year. Yan po. Ah, okay. So at least may experience ka naman kahit pa paano, di ba? Ah, so yung, uh, you take mo na lang yung advice ng inyong mga seniors para yes, very smooth yung ating ano, yung ating service, okay? Yes, so ito, ito um since um familiar ako kay Ma'am Hasmin kasi I know that she is a member of the Gender and Development Focal Point System po ng Namibia. Ano-ano po sa tingin ninyo yung mga naging adjustments naman na ginawa ng leadership ng mga survey vessels, yung ating apat na survey vessels, para maging comfortable po kayo? And then um, maybe zooming in to a very crucial GAD topic, are there enough maybe mechanisms in place para po siguro maiwasan yung mga gender-based violence, katulad siguro ng mga sexual harassment? Kasi this is very timely because we are celebrating Women's Month. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, first of all, HB or the uniform core of H of Namria uh, does not tolerate any form of harassment no? or any abuse of uh, women personnel, kahit of lady officers yan, or lady NCOs or even our civilians. No? Or kahit nga OJT or students na, uh, who visit our vessel. So we don't tolerate that. And mechanisms-wise, um, I mentioned earlier, our vessels, they were, yung Presbytero at Ventura, they are more than 20 years old already. So obviously, since 2004 lang tayo nag-accept ng women and 2008 lang tayo nagpasampa, the vessels themselves were not designed to really, ano, uh, parang magkaroon ng boarding for women. So uh, what uh, the management did was, meron tayong parang clinic na tinatawag sa barko and that clinic has its own comfort room. Kasi kung puro lalaki sa barko, syempre sharing ng comfort room yan, di ba? Kortina, kortina lang, as in walang door, Andrew. So ah. what they did was, nilagay nila sa sick bay yung clinic sa barko. And then, and so, women, uh, like me during my time, we have our own comfort room. So para kami naka-hotel. Kami, isa kami sa may pinakamalaking room sa buong barko next yung CEO natin, executive officer, plus kami. Other officers, they had smaller bank, ano, mga beds. So, meron kaming mas senior na officers who actually mas deserve nila yung ganong privilege but uh, walang issue sa kanila. Walang naging issue sa kanila na uh, we had better accommodations uh, compared to them. So, I, I think napakalaking bagay that uh, men, um, they, they don't see na dapat equal yung mga babae kung kami na, naliligo sa dekorte ng CR, dapat kayo rin. Uh, we are so happy na walang ganyang issue. No? So, they pretty much know already the biological aspect of being a woman. So, yun pa lang napakalaking bagay na. Also, there were representations of women in every technical working group, in every um, board, personal board. Lagi tayong may mga ganong participation. Ah, okay. And, um, hindi na limit yung role depende sa gender mo. So let's say for uh, for Geraldine, she's currently a survey officer. So it doesn't um, basically we don't look to any gender. Also, uh, maalala ko lang. Um, uh, sabi ko nga we don't tolerate yung harassment. May nasampula na sa ganyan. And so our NCOs, our men, our uh, they don't really ano. Um, hindi na sila magbabaka sakali kasi talagang nasasampulan namin yan. We have an investigation board for administrative cases as well, uh, which we take seriously also. Na talagang if kailangang ma-remove, ma-drop from the roles, we really do. So I think sa ganyang aspect, in a way, um, protected yung mga kababaihan sa HB. And I think that's the reason also na maraming nagsasabi na mahigpit daw sa HB. But I think in a good way, um, uh, I, I think it's very important that women feel safe working in the government in a in an environment like mm -hmm. ano, uh, in the public sector. Thank you.
Okay, thank you Ms. Hasmin. Ma'am, uh, actually maganda yung narinig ko kasi parang talagang institutionalized na talaga yung GAD, uh, mainstream na yung mga GAD mechanisms natin sa ating mga survey vessels. And of course, uh, I can vouch for this for the entire agency, for the entire NAMRIA. Talagang mainstream na po ang GAD. It's one of the best practices of the agency. So I'm happy to hear na even sa ating mga survey vessels, this is actually being practiced optimally. So very good po tayo dyan. So uh, medyo ano, na curious lang ako kasi nga, ang pumunta naman po tayo siguro kay um, sa pinakabata sa ating mga resource panel. Tinitingnan ko kasi yun sa screen ngayon. Uh, since Miss Joanna, kayo po yung pinakabata. Ilang taon ka na po ba ma'am, if I may ask? Um, 24 po. 24, just to follow. <laughs> okay, yung tanda ko pala sa iyo, ma'am. Pero yun nga po, since kayo po yung pinakabata, ma'am, sa service, kasi I'm sure there are streamers right now, yung mga nanonood po sa atin sa YouTube, na very curious and interested about the work that you do sa HB, particularly sa commission service. So, ikaw na bago, uh, how are you taking the experience po ba? na exceed ba yung expectations mo? Are you feeling overwhelmed or perhaps underwhelmed with the job that you are doing? Um, actually po, kasi I entered NAMRI as a non-commissioned officer or was formerly mm -hmm. referred to as enlisted personnel. So that was 2019 before I became a commissioned officer. Um, to think na two years na din po ako sa service, it still amazes me on how every day parang may binabato sa'yo na mga bagong challenges. And to answer your question po, if it is overwhelming, yes. <laughs> but in a good way naman po, um, it challenges me to be a better person siguro po or a better public servant. And today, I'm still looking forward pa rin po to what my current position has to offer on my career growth and to my professional growth and personal growth as well na din. And to answer naman po yung another question nyo, if it exceeds my expectation, definitely yes. Uh, the learnings and experiences na nag-gain ko po right now uh, would not compare to those other officers like sila Ma'am Min, sila Ma'am Geraldine, Ma'am Clarissa, and other officers po uh, would not compare to them. But still, uh, the answer is yes po. Ayun. Kaya Ma'am Joanna, magstay ka pa sa Namria, ha? Kasi marami ka pa daw may experience talaga na mga, ano, mga marami. Uh, survey vessel, hydrographic service, marami ka pang may experience kagaya nga naman sabi ng mga senior mo. So, yes, I hope na mag-stay ka, ma'am, sa Namria for a very long time. Magang retirement na dapat yan. <laughs> okay. So, um, since we are talking about God, okay, so I think um, maganda yung discussion natin about the experiences of survey vessel and also with the field work. Of course, at the end of the day, uh, just like most of us, our women commissioned officers go to their respective homes to be with their, their families. Some of them actually have started their own families. So for our last discussion point, we will maybe talk about family relationships. So um, I know for, for the, from the four resource persons that we have, uh, one of our resource person already has a family of her own, si Ma'am Clarissa. Ayan. So kamusta po ang pagiging uh, isang dakilang ina at the same time pagiging isang commissioned officer, Ma'am? And how do you juggle or balance yung siguro demands ng work and family life? Hmm. So, siguro when I say this, no, maraming mga ka-relate. A lot of moms, if not, kita hindi mo talaga alam paano mo hatiin yung sarili mo. <laughs> Baka mo maging nana, kailangan mo maging asawa, kailangan mo maging anak. Tapos, civil servant ka pa, di ba? Sama mo pa na minsan yung iba may side hustle and other responsibilities. And then there are days when you feel guilty kasi you can't be your best at any of them. <laughs> diba? Tapos may pandemic pa. So sobrang gulo, sobrang gulo. So in short, nakakabaliw siya talaga minsan. So, pero I don't see this naman as a reason to give up on any of it. So as you said, diba, may need to balance the demands. So, 
siguro time management really plays a big role. Uh, aside from that, at yung multitasking skills, <laughs> what I really do and what I learned when I become a, became a mom is you can ask for help. Sometimes nakakalimutan natin eh, na it's not a bad thing. So I have my husband, I have my mom, my sister, yung babysitters namin, mga dakila namin babysitters. <laughs> I also have my co-workers, yung senior and junior officers ko that I can depend on. And they all help me so I can take care of my family and still be able to work. Also, uh, since assigned na din ako ngayon sa nautical charting, so uh, nababa ako nung, ano, nung I got pregnant na. No? So it was my decision as well as the management. Kasi mas predictable and manageable talaga yung schedule pag uh, nasa office ka, which also helps. So siguro to, ano, to sum that up lang, Uh, sa mga mommies na parang working moms and stay-at-home moms na feeling nyo babaliw na kayo. So, think of your sanity first talaga. Pag di mo na kaya, you can take a break and you can consider asking for help talaga. Chances are may mga handa namang tumulong sa iyo talaga. So, yeah. Ayun, thank you, Ma'am Kla. Ah, gusto ko lang i-reiterate yung sinabi ni Ma'am Kla no, na do not be afraid to ask for help. Kasi nga, uh, marami naman talagang tutulong sa atin if we actually need one. Okay? So, a very good point. Si Ma'am Clarissa pala, for the information of everyone, if I may share, uh, tama ba Ma'am Clarissa, you have a 21-month-old toddler, di ba Ma'am? Yes, are very active, very makulit <laughs> na toddler, si Chel. <laughs> Parang nakakong nga siya sa screen kanina eh. <laughs> so the, the, talagang the realities of juggling nga talaga yung demands ng ating work sa family life. Pero ito nga, ibang usapan na kasi kapag uh, nakasampa na kayo sa barko o sa survey vessel. I for one, ay, hindi mo na ako nakasampa sa barko, but I had a year gap sa Namria where I actually taught abroad. So may longing ako sa family ko in between that one year. So kayo po, hindi ba kayo, i-assign ko siguro yung mga resource persons po natin. Starting with ang pinakabata sa atin, si Ma'am Joanna. Hindi ka ba nakakaramdam ng longing o namimiss yung in family, lalo na kapag naka-assign kayo sa mga field work or sa survey vessels, for example? Um, siguro po, um, syempre hindi naman po natin maaalis yung pagkamis natin sa family natin. So, pero since ganun po talaga yung nature ng work natin na uh, yun yung sinumpaan natin na oath, bali, so we have to accept the fact na it happens. Parang ganun po. Kailangan na lang natin mag-adapt. So, para magampanan po natin maayos yung mga roles natin. Yun po. What about sa sa'yo, Ma'am Kla? Nung nakasakay mo kayo sa survey vessel? Oo. Nung nakasakay ako sa survey vessel, hindi pa ako married nun. No? Pero syempre, uh, hindi talaga maaalis yung namimiss mo yung pamilya mo. Tapos, since nakasama ako sa Sulusi nun, so two weeks yun, uh, uh, wala pa yung signal most of the time. So parang umiiyak na lang ako. May ako sa gabi kasi namimiss ko yung family ko, namimiss ko yung then boyfriend ko na husband ko nun ako. So, ayun, ganun siya minsan. But, at the end of the day, so, breakdown ka lang, onte, <laughs> tapos, pabangon ka ulit, and you do your job. Okay, so, sinenext ko na si Ma'am uh, Geraldine. So, hindi ka ba nakakaramdam ng longing sa inyong families, lalo na kapag naka-assign sa mga survey presents? Well, hindi mo, yun nga, hindi siya mawawala. Talagang, laging yung pamilya mo, yun yung safe place mo eh. Pero sa technology kasi natin ngayon, madali namang mag-connect. So from time to time, lagi nagkausap sila. And then for, hindi, siguro yung longest time na hindi ko sila nakausap is two weeks nung meron coming project. Pero alam ko kasi na lagi nila akong pinag-pray, alam ko na lagi nila akong naiisip. So enough na sa akin yun. Ah, okay. So, lagi daw siyang pinag-pray ng kanyang family. It's very essential also yung faith natin. And of course, Ma'am Hasmin, ay hindi ba kayo nakakaramdam ng longing sa inyong family, sa inyong boyfriend or, or asawa? So, natatawa lang ako kasi syempre yung age, yung age gap, no? So, at yung <laughs> time, may, may cellphone na naman noon, pero hindi pa kasing ganda ng mga cellphones niya. 
sa mga signal. So, pero ako kasi I came from a family na uh, medyo open at radical. At pero very ano kami, parang close ni yung very close to each other. We don't go out that much. Kami-kami lang. And so nung graduate talaga ako sa college at nag-work, talagang pulasan. So So hindi ako masyadong hindi ako masyado hindi ako masyado, hindi ko masyadong na miss yung family. Parang more on finally. <laughs> Ganun yung experience ko at that time. Pero yes, kapag katulad nung sa Philippine rice, wala talagang signal for two weeks, ganon. Tapos you're sick. Alam mo yung pagfeeling na pag may sakit ka, kahit anong gamot mo hindi ka gagaling, pero hilutin ka lang ng nanay mo magaling ka na. So I think yun yung mamimiss mo. But good thing nga uh, yung support system ng barko rin nandiyan. So so in a way uh, as you go along habang nagtatrabaho ka, you have made parang meron ka nang new family to take care of you. So hindi naman as replacement ng family mo talaga, but at least someone a new brand of support system which is very important in a uh, work life ours. Ayun, gustong-gusto ko yung words na support system kasi nga very important yun. Curious lang po ako, this would be my last question for our resource panel. Paano nga po ba yung communication? So para of course, for those who are interested to work in the future with HB, uh, paano nga po ba yung kapag nasa survey vessel kayo, do you also, do you have internet access or si Ma'am Geraldine po kaya makaka-answer sa akin? Kasi um, nasa nasa barko ka ba ngayon, ma'am? Yes po, nasa barko ako. Nasa barko ka ngayon, okay. So, yung case ko po namin ngayon, nakatabi lang kasi kami. So, ah, okay. yes, may mm-hmm. internet kami. And then yung survey vessel namin, uh, hindi po kami nag-survey ng 24/7. Normally daytime lang. So, pagdating ng hapon, pagdating ng gabi, meron na rin kami signal, nakaka-communicate na rin kami with others, with family. Ganyan. So for big vessels po, ang alam ko, they can survey as long as two weeks and then after two weeks, magbabankering sila, magre-rewatering sila. So tumatabi sila, ayun, nakakaroon na po ulit sila ng signal sa community sa others. Ah, okay. So dumadaong din naman yung mga survey vessels from time to time. Yes po. So siguro in the interest of time, uh, yun na siguro yung last na... Marami pa sana ako kasi very curious din ako personally sa mga ginagawa po talaga ng ating mga commissioned officers. Eh. Of course, particularly our women commissioned officers. But that would be my last question for uh, for the rest of the resource persons. At this time, nasabi ko nga po, we have four resource persons. But no, we actually have one more resource person. So we have a very proactive colleague from the volunteer service group of the Philippine Coast Guard with us today. Siya po si Lieutenant Commander Alma B. Miraflor. And she will be presenting to us their organization, mandates, and possibly career opportunities. So allow me first to introduce very briefly kung ano nga po ba yung designation, ano yung background po ni Ma'am Alma. We will be showing an ABP after this. Ayan, so um, si Ma'am Alma, she's actually a Lieutenant Commander uh, of the Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary Service. She is currently the Assistant Deputy Central Staff for Maritime Environmental Protection or the ACDS for Mare of Coast Guard Auxiliary District NCRCL. She is also a Deputy De- Director Auxiliary Squadron for the Administration or the DDASA of the 109 Squadron. So ladies and gentlemen, I now give the floor to Lieutenant Commander Alma for her presentation. Over to you, ma'am. Ma'am, paki on po yung ating microphone. Thank you. Um... Good morning and happy National Women's Month to our dear colleagues, distinguished participants, and dear friends. Uh, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the people in Amriyat 
Guide who organized this event in celebration of the National Women's Month for the Empowered Women. So thank you to all the women who are watching and listening to us. As we celebrate the National Women's Month, uh, I appreciate those empowered women, not just because uh, who, those who have ranks and titles, but those who have, who in their simple way contributed and volunteered by helping their neighborhood and community. So let me say this quote by Elizabeth Andrew that volunteers do not necessarily have time, they just have uh, the heart. So please allow me to share my slide on what a uh, Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary do. So slide please. This is a brief presentation only as we have a uh, training personnel who is in charge, um, in charge to do the half day presentation. So we cannot afford it right now, right? So let me start. So um, the Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary was organized under Section 11 of Republic Act 9993 as a civilian volunteer organization under the direct control of the Philippine Coast Guard Commandant. So thus our organization is not an ordinary organization as we are uniform are required to adhere the customs and tradition of the Philippine Coast Guard. So its organizational structure is parallel to Philippine Coast Guard to, and has its own chain of leadership and management. So we are mandated to assist the Philippine Coast Guard in the promotion of safety of life and properties at sea in the conduct of its four main functions. So here they are. Mm. So the four main functions uh, are the community relations or MCOMREL, maritime search and rescue or the MARSAR, maritime safety and marine environmental protection. So maritime community relations, the Philippine Coast Guard is mandated to assist the Philippine Coast Guard in enhancing maritime community relations through uh, the conduct of civic action, participation under the National Service Training Program or NSTP, uh, youth development projects, promotion of recreational uh, safety and other related activities. So ito yung pakikipagtulungan at ugnayan sa mga komunidad sa baybaying dagat para sa katuparan ng mga mission nito. So what are the examples of civic action? So the following activities are authorized for the Philippine Coast Guard to undertake uh, medical and dental missions, feeding programs, relief operations, livelihood trainings. So those are the examples of uh, civic actions. For the Maritime Search and Rescue, or MARSAR, the Philippine Coast Guard is mandated to conduct search and rescue operations and to respond to ship emergency situations through the following actions. So you can provide assets such as uh, vehicles, uh, motor bankas, uh, jet ski, or rubber boats, or any available uh, transportation that would uh, be of aid in search and rescue operations. You can also share your expertise, uh, knowledge on special cases or emergency situations that arise. Provide also medical assistance to victims and affected uh, individuals. You can also provide uh, relief operations, provide manpower as necessary, but in no occasion that the Philippine Coast Guard will conduct a search and rescue without the permission of the Philippine Coast Guard. So except while at sea or when communication is uh, hampered or is not available in which uh, case. So the Philippine Coast Guard shall render the appropriate report at the first opportunity after the arrival at shore. So maritime safety, ito yung pagtataguyod sa pangangalaga ng kaligtasan ng mga sibilyan at ari-arian sa karagatan. So enhancing maritime safety through uh, passenger assistance in terminal ports for 
orderly and safe travel of the passengers. So uh, you can, we can assist in training and education like boat handling, basic life support, and many more. So in Maritime Environmental Protection or MAREP, uh, ito yung pangangalaga sa mga yamang dagat at sa kapaligiran nito. So in the performance of uh, such function, the Philippine Coast Guard may assist the Philippine Coast Guard through the following. So in appropriate, provide technical assistance, expertise to the Philippine Coast Guard on matters pertaining to marine environment protection. So assist in the conduct of lectures and training to promote public awareness on marine environment protection. So you can conduct river coastal cleanup activities and participate coordinate the annual uh, international coastal cleanup. So you can also mm -hmm. conduct, uh, uh, conduct also mangrove planting activities conduct coral uh, reef assessments, protection and reforestation uh, preser and preservation. So in Philippine Coast Guard, you can share your time, talent and treasure, though this is voluntary and no monetary compensation given, but for every effort that we share or exert, it has corresponding awards, awards in the form of ribbons and medals like this. Uh, these ribbons and medals are in um, recognition for the invaluable and meritorious services rendered uh, by the members through their financial, logistical goods and skills in achieving uh, Philippine Coast Guard mission. So, but do not be enticed solely to this award thing because uh, when in the field mission together with the people you help, there's a sense of fulfillment and happiness and joy in your hearts. So I hope uh, you get a glimpse of what uh, we do and we are uh, even a even a few minutes of my slideshow. So I also hope that it inspires you and together we all make difference by helping others through us. Thank you again and happy Women's Month. Okay, maraming salamat po, Lieutenant Commander Alma Miraflor for that presentation. Mabuhay po kayo ma'am. So ang naiisip ko nga lang po is this is another yung ginagawa po ni Ma'am based sa kanyang slides. This is another case example of amplifying, exuding passion for the service of the public. At kagaya nga nung sinabi din ni Ma'am Alma kanina, uh, as coined by Elizabeth Andrew, volunteers do not necessarily have the time, but they do have the time. So, um, nagdito na po tayo sa portion ngayon where your questions, comments, or maybe things that you would like to share with us will be discussed. Okay? So, allow me to just go through some of the questions. Um, siguro unahin ko muna yung sarili kong question. Di ba makasarili na? Ayan, so ang sarili kong question muna is kay Ma'am Alma. Um, Ma'am, um, na-involved po ba kayo sa cleanup ng Manila Bay? Kasi before po, as context to my question, uh, I was working with the Manila Bay Coordinating Office ng DNR prior to my job here in Namibia. So may involvement na po ba tayo with the Manila Bay uh, cleanup? Uh, yes po. Uh, actually, before pa na ano, uh, restore yung Manila Bay, talagang uh, meron na kaming activities. So um, we have a weekly and monthly uh, coastal cleanup activities. Wow, weekly and monthly coastal cleanup activities. So, ano po yan, ma'am? So, so um, for example, pwede bang mag-join po dyan yung mga ordinary citizens po natin para po makisali po sa cleanup na ginagawa po ng inyong group? Yes, absolutely. Ah, okay. So, ayun po. So, call din po ito sa ating mga viewers right now. Uh, maybe you can enjoy uh, the public services, especially the cleanup activities being done by the Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary Service in Ma'am Alma. And nakita niyo naman po, hopefully na-capture niyo yung mobile number po. Ma'am, ano po, uh, para po if ever you have concerns and you would like to join as a volunteer for PCGA, uh, contact lang po natin si Ma'am Alma. Ayun po. So another set of questions. Thank you, Ma'am Alma. Okay, so... Uh, I have one question here from uh, former Captain uh, Shilon Kadawa, sir. Maganda umaga po. Uh, considering the physical and biological limitations, including current and future maternal responsibilities, 
Hasnam Ria set a maximum percentage of women to make up the Namriya Commission officers and enlistment uh, enlisted personnel for. So sino po kaya ang pwede maka-answer dito mga ma'am? I'll, I'll do it na lang. Sige po ma'am Hasmin. So sa kung ano yan, um, percentage on limit, maximum limit. Maximum, yes ma'am. We, we don't have that right now. Kasi nga, the idea is it should not be an issue. So it should not be a problem. So kanina na, na show siya, no, over 30% ng population ng uniform for ay ng commission officers ay mga kababaihan and it was never an issue actually siguro before um, ang mga gamit kasi na before malalaki mabibigat let's say battery sindaki ng battery ng sasakyan bubuhatin and maybe that's why they want they preferred male pero ngayon kasi battery is a small as cellphone na lang minsan di ba Andrew so yeah. it's not a big deal anymore so nawawala na yung uh, yung physical and biological limitations. I, I'm not clearly sure kung ano yung meaning niya. No? Kasi sa ngayon, yung mga kababaihan natin, at least sa apat na naririto, I, I don't think may limitations. Tama, di ba? Walang limitation eh. We can be uh, we, can, we can be someone and anyone in the service. Maybe Jerry can be the next CEO. Di ba? Or maybe Joan, magtagal pa. She can be the next director. So, walang limit. I, I don't see na, and hindi ko rin nakikita na uh, magkakaroon pa siya in the future. Even Clarissa as a baby now. She's one of our best TSC compilers. So, uh, no need for a limit. And I think the management, Namria recognizes that. Hindi siya naging issue. Ayan. So, Namria, sabi nga ni Ma'am Haspin, Namria can accept as many, of course, depending nga dun sa capacity dun ng agency, as many uh, women as possible doon sa ating core of commission service. So, that's a good news para sa ating mga kababaihan. I have a question later for Ma'am Joanna, but uh, before that, uh, si Sir Marvin Almazan naman, uh, may katanungan din po sa May I ask to our women commissioners if they have experience related in their work, the task given to them that work they were not able to accomplish because they are a woman. Okay, so medyo controversial yata itong question na ito. But again, I would just like to open the floor for your responses. Sino po kaya ang pwedeng maka-answer nito? Mamas me, would you like to answer the question again? As a woman, wala eh. As mahilohen, oo, marami. Agree, <laughs> agree ako dyan. Wala naman siguro. Wala akong mag-iisip. Marami akong ginagawa dahil madalas ako mahilo. I don't know. Wait, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry ka ba? Wala akong matandaan na wala akong kinaya. Just because of, dahil babae ah. Parang wala akong matandaan. Kayo, Ma'am Geraldine. Uh, sa akin kasi, uh, yung paningin ko kasi, genderless yung trabaho natin. So, walang... Wala talaga, walang trabaho na hindi kaya gawin ng babae, na kaya gawin ng lalaki. Pare-pareho lang yan. Kay Ma'am Clarissa naman, may hindi ka ba nagawa ng trabaho dahil sinabi nila na babae ka? Wala akong maisip. Tama si Ma'am Mino, limitless. At saka, alon lang. Alon lang ang magpapatakot. <laughs> Yun lang talaga. Pero aside from that, sa work, wala ka. Eh, ang alon naman siguro, ang genderless din naman ang alon. Pili ko kahit yung mga lalaki. Ma-apek ko kami naman. Ano, di ba? So, mga nga, misan mas weak pa yung mga lalaki in terms of alon, di ba? Ayan. Si Ma'am Joanna, bilang nagsastart ka pa lang sa iyong career, ah, may nagawa, hindi ka ba nagawa ng responsibilities kunyari dahil sa limit, sa sinasabi nila na you are a woman? Um, so far naman po, wala pa naman po and I would like to agree with my senior officers po na genderless nga po yung work po natin. Ayun po. Ayun, genderless. O, oh, importante po yung marinig ng lahat. Ah. Genderless po yung work sa commission service. So, whether you are a woman or a man, genderless, you will be able to accomplish anything that your job requests you to do. Okay? So, si Ma'am Joanna, since nandyan ka na sa screen, nakikita ko ngayon. Uh, for those of you who are interested sa mga streamers po natin, for those of you who are interested, paano nga ba? Ito siguro yung last question ko na for this morning. 
Paano nga ba yung application process? Pwede niyo po bang i-walk through ako, kaming lahat, kung paano nagiging isang commissioned officer sa Namuya? Um, actually po, kapag meron pong op, um, vacant na position, uh, pinopost po siya. Sa, so makikita po ninyo yun sa website ng Namria kung merong mga vacant na position for our commissioned officers. And then, uh, meron kasi tayong uh, PBCO, uh, parang sila po yung board na nag-handle po ng mga applicants. Uh, first step po is syempre magsasubmit po sila ng kanilang mga applications, yung kanilang mga uh, eligibilities, ganon. Um, and then, after that, magkakaroon po ng first step, ay uh, first exam, which is written. It is a very competitive exam na uh, kailangan mong pumasa. So, you can uh, enter the second step, which is yung uh, psychological exam naman po. And then, Kapag nakapasa po kayo dun sa dalawang steps na yon, ang next naman na po is yung uh, CBI or the competency-based interview. Very competitive din po yun. And kung nakapasok po kayo dun sa tatlo, um, you will be ranked uh, depending sa mga scores na nag-gather nyo during those steps. And then kung sino po yung mga pasok or yung cut sa um, vacancy, sila po yung makakapasok. Ah, okay. Pero ang basic, ang nakikita ko ngayon sa website natin, requirement po dito is engineering graduate po, di ba? Required pa na engineering graduate. Yes po. Kailangan po, or, or graduate of military academy, if I'm not mistaken. Po. Ah, okay. So, military academy. So, talagang very, naririnig ko pa lang, very competitive na yung mga exams. Siguro may mga mas din yan, ma'am, no? Ay, ayun, uh, surely, meron pong mas po. po. Ayan, mas. Kamusta naman? <laughs> Ayan, si Sir Gilbert. May pahabol po na tanong si Sir Gilbert Alviola. Hi, Sir Gilbert. Um, how do you deal with gender bias or sexism in the workplace or even outside the workplace? So siguro po, Ma'am Kla, baka pwede niya po itong i-answer. How do you deal with gender bias or sexism in the workplace or even outside the workplace? Ako, ano, I receive them elegantly na lang siguro. Ay, nagpapantig yung tenga ko, no? Sa, na sa ngayon. <laughs> Parang sa ngayon, meron pa rin, meron pa rin talaga. We hear it minsan sa office, minsan outside. Tapos parang ma, ma, mag, pag, medyo aware ka dun sa issue. Parang magpapantig yung tenga mo. Pero hindi naman ibig sabihin that does not give you the right naman na awain sila, gano'n diba? Hindi mo naman yung gagawin. But it's better to educate them and sabi mo rin sa kanila yung point of view mo. So, ayun. Ayun. Very good point. Okay. May gusto ko po ba mag-answer doon, ma'am? Mga ma'am, sa mga resource panels po natin, how do you handle yung ating mga... Ayun, si ma'am, ano pala? Si ma'am Alma. A different perspective from the PCG. Ma'am Alma, if you are still there, how do you deal po with gender bias or sexism in the workplace or even outside the workplace? Kasi nga male dominated din itong Philippine Coast Guard man. And dyan pa ba si Ma'am Alma? Okay, sorry. Ayan, hello ma'am. Ayan. Okay, uh, in Philippine Coast Guard, yes, you're correct. Uh, it's a male-dominated environment. Though at first, I felt out of place. But we need to be confident and believe in our, in ourselves, believe in your skills. So don't limit your capacity being a woman. So just do your duty by heart and ask God to guide you. So that's it. Ayan, so very good to know answer ni Ma. Faith talaga ang magbabind sa atin lahat for... Uh, a better world, Ika. Okay. So, salamat, Ma'am Alma. So, I think um, um, that would be our question and answer. If you have further questions to our resource panel, I think we will be giving uh, maybe a contact detail for us to be reached later on. So, maraming salamat po sa lahat. And um, to formally close this morning's career talk, I would like to call in of course, the focal person of the Namria Gender and Development Focal Point System Resource Data Analysis Branch OIC Director, Ophelia T. Castro. So over to you, Boss Epi.
Hi, thank you, Andrew. So now we have come to the end of today's event. I would say that it is truly a woman's world. So I am very proud of our women commissioned officers, women in uniform as we call them, for they are indeed cloth with strength and dignity. Sabi nga ng ating mga panelists, there is really no limit to what we as women can accomplish. So like a well-balanced career, family, and of course, self. So on behalf of the Namria GFPS, I would like to thank all those who made this event possible. Kayong lahat na tumangkilik sa ating mga resource speakers, si Jasmine, Geraldine, Clarissa, Joanna, at kay Ma'am Alma ng PCG, who shared their knowledge and experiences of a career once only allowed for men. So sa ating organizers, ang ating Namria GFPS IEC group, and of course, ayo Andrew. So we hope that whatever learnings that was shared today will inspire us women to face whatever challenges we will encounter. We are stronger than we think, sabi nga ni Ma'am Alma. We just have to believe. So Juana, kaya! So with that, magandang tanghali at maraming salamat po. Ayan, okay. So maraming salamat po, Boss Epi. Basta kuha na kaya. Ayan, so maraming salamat po again. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if... Nasa chat box daw po, okay. So we actually have shared, before we bid our goodbyes, we have uh, shared the link for both the attendance sheet and the evaluation forms. Ito po kasi ay requirement para po ma-issuehan kayo ng certificate of attendance. At ang deadline po nito is at 4 p.m. today. So again po, I'm, I repeat, uh, yung link po for the two documents that you need to accomplish. First is the certificate of attendance. And then the second one is the uh, evaluation form. You need to actually uh, access the link for you to be issued a certificate of attendance for this career. Po. So again, maraming salamat po, Boss Epi, for that very inspirational closing remark. Um, before we bid our goodbyes, allow me to also extend our appreciation para po sa lahat ng ating resource persons, kay Ma'am Joanna, kay Ma'am Clarissa, kay Ma'am Geraldine, kay Ma'am Aspin, and of course kay Ma'am Alma for actively engaging in our discussions this morning. So I hope that their leadership and passion for work inspired all of us, especially those young girls out there. So truly, naiisip ko nga at sinasabi ko na they are not just inspirations but they are also agents of change in our society. So mabuhay po kayong lahat and happy Women's Month to all. So maraming salamat po. On behalf of our administrator, Yusek Peter and Yanko, PhD SESO 1, and the members of the NAMRIA Gender and Development Focal Point System, led by Boss Effie Castro. This has been Andrew Ramos thanking you for attending the Women Inspiring Other Women Career Talk. Please keep safe, everyone, and goodbye.